Godot 4.2 is just around the corner and it comes loaded with exciting new enhancements, both in 2D and 3D capabilities, better editor tools, performance improvements and much more. With the launch of Godot 4, the developers openly shared their ambition to roll out minor updates more frequently. True to their word, we saw the 4.1 version soon after the release of Godot 4 earlier this year, and now 4.2 is on its way. In this video, I don't want to bore you with the complete list of new features, but instead I will share with you my personal top 5 anticipated features from the upcoming version. So grab a seat and let's begin. Godot 4.2 incorporates the possibility to configure the editor to give us a warning in those cases in which we have not defined a type in a JDScript file. While some might not view this as critical, it's something very important for those of us who have been working with strongly typed languages for years. Writing typed code allows us to debug better, since the compiler will always know what type of data is referencing each variable. And in the case of Godot 4, typed scripts have better performance than untyped ones. To activate it, just go to Project, Project Settings, and here search for GDScript. In the list of rules that appears, look for the Untyped Declaration option and set it to Warn or Error, depending on whether you simply want the compiler to warn you, or if you directly want the game to not be able to compile if some type has not been specified. Godot 4.2 features support for AMD's FSR 2.2, which is a technology designed to increase the frame rate per second and improve gaming performance by dynamically scaling the graphics resolution. In this case, Godot will incorporate support for version 2.2 of FSR, which, since version 2, introduces an approach based on temporal reconstruction techniques, which means that data from previous frames is taken into account. We can have an idea of what the level of improvement will be if we look at this post from this Reddit user, where he shows the comparison between an image without any type of scaling and the same image with FSR 2.2 applied. It is also worth mentioning that FSR is an open source technology. Anyone can incorporate it into their game, and it can work on all types of graphic cards beyond AMD cards. That is, it can also work on Nvidia or Intel cards. Godot 4.2 also includes one of the most anticipated features for all those developers who create games for mobile platforms. The possibility of running the game on an iOS simulator or a physical iPhone with a single click. This function has been available in Android for a long time, and now Godot finally incorporates feature parity with the Apple platform as well. For those of you who didn't know, before this it was necessary to do a complete export of the project open it with Xcode and run it from there. Imagine having to do this 200 or 300 times a day while you are testing your game. Something totally unthinkable that, from my point of view, made Godot a bad option given the complexity of creating an agile workflow if what you want is to publish your game in the Apple App Store. To activate it, you will need to have Xcode installed and either an open simulator or a physical device connected and unlocked in developer mode. You will also need to have the iOS Deploy program installed. You can install it through Homebrew with Brew installed iOS Deploy. Then we can see its installation path by running which iOS Deploy. We will have to configure this path in Editor Settings, Export, iOS. We will also have to have an export preset for iOS configured and installed. After this, we can click on this button to run our game directly to the simulator or to our iOS device. Have you ever been overwhelmed by the amount of code you can have in a single script? Godot users have long had the ability to fold functions to try to make everything a little more elegant, but with Godot 4.2, we will be able to take this a step further with the incorporation of code regions. These regions consist of the ability to group blocks of code and give them a name. For example, if I have all these functions that are related to each other, I can start a region like this, give it a descriptive name, and then mark the end of the region like this. 
From this point on, this entire code segment is foldable exactly the same as if it were a method. Through these code regions, we can have our scripts much better organized and labeled. A very welcome improvement for organization fans like me. If you are developing a 2D game, you may be interested in the fact that Godot 4.2 incorporates forced integer scaling. This functionality, once activated, guarantees a grid of square pixels without distortions regardless of the aspect ratio. Forced integer scaling is especially beneficial for pixel art games or any 2D games where maintaining the integrity of the original art style is crucial. The advantage of this method is that it preserves the crispness and clarity of the original pixel art, avoiding the blurring or distortion that can occur with non-integer scaling. In some 2D games, designed for specific display resolutions, artists carefully craft each pixel. When these games are played on modern, high-resolution screens without integer scaling, the pixels can become stretched or squashed, leading to a loss of the original art's aesthetic quality. With forced integer scaling, developers have more control over how their game scales on different screen sizes and resolutions. This is a list of my top 5 most anticipated features of Godot 4.2. Now, I want you to tell me which upcoming features are you most excited about. Drop your thoughts in the comments below, hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching this video until the end. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Goodbye.